All right. Let's look at um, the Sui and the Tang Dynasty and the Five Dynasty. Technology and art, and how the kind of uh, um, they are integrated with architecture. Um, so that would be the thematic, thematic focus of this lecture. So Sui Tang China. <coughs> um, from 589-0707. Um, <clears throat> and in the uh, Mongolian Priory and Highland, um, in the seventh, in the sixth century to tenth century, it was the Turks. So back then, the Turks were the um, the ruler of the of this land before the turks was the xiongnu um, xiongnu and many others uh, xianbei etc after the turks um, you know were the mongols so this land had been occupied by different nomadic people. And nomadic people, uh, literally, they do not stay in one place in history. So they migrate, right? So in the 6th century to the 10th century, the Turks were the master of this land. And later, they moved westward and went all the way to today's Turkey. And some of them stayed in Central Asia. <clears throat> um, and then the Northeastern regime, we know there was a Bohai kingdom. And actually, there were also independent kingdom in the southwest part of China, um, where we have the Nanjiao kingdom. Uh, kingdom, Nanjiao. We will look at a building from Nanjiao. The Nanjiao Kingdom. Um, and there we have Bohai, which we looked at their capital city, influenced by the city of Chang'an. And there we have Japan, right? We look at the Heian-kyo, which is somewhere there. <clears throat> so um, Sui Tang, China, The, the first point I wanted to make is that the wooden structure was advanced greatly during the Tang Dynasty. We know that during the Han Dynasty, previous Han Dynasty, uh, monumental architecture relied on the combination of rammed earth platform and wooden construction. So in order to achieve great height, great scale, an earth core must be constructed and a wooden structure surround that earth core and built on top of that earth core, hide that earth core up to create an illusion of great imper interior space. In the Tang Dynasty, 
that was no longer the case. And the reason is because the wooden construction technology had been advanced to a level that craftsmen could be could construct a great size with just pure wooden construction. And this was the case of the Ming Tang built by a very, very unique ruler in Chinese history, and that is Empress Wu Zetian. Empress Wu was the only female emperor in Chinese history, right? So that sounds kind of awkward in English, but it is not um, in Chinese because in Chinese there was a difference between an empress as the wife of an emperor and an empress who actually ruled the country. There were numerous empresses in Chinese history who were the wife of empress but there was only one empress who actually declared herself as the son of heaven. So, um, you know, she was a female, but she assumed the title of son of heaven. And Wu Zetian was the only ruler, only um, empress who did that. She was the wife of Emperor Gaozong. Um, and uh, she was also uh, the mother of three successive emperors. And she also ruled as an emperor um, <clears throat> in her own hand. He ba she basically ruled China from the year 683 to 705. That is, you know, 23, um, 23 years she ruled China. First, as the Empress Dowager, as her sons. Um, and uh, during that period, you know, she basically, from about 683 to 690, she ruled as Empress Dowager. And um, her sons in throne were actually um, pulpit uh, rulers. And then the, in the year 690, she just uh, demoted her sons and declared herself as the emperor, as the uh, son of heaven. So she was a very powerful uh, woman and a very unique case in a Confucian society uh, in which you know, it's very, very um, unlikely for a lady to become a son of heaven. And she, <clears throat> um, she did a few things to change the rulership, to change the mandate of heaven. So she made an, an, an attempt to transfer the mandate of heaven from the Li family of the Tang Dynasty to her own uh, lineage, she, tr she tried that, um, and you know, a few years before she died, she um, dropped that idea and restored her her son um, to become the emperor again. But she during the one of that effort was to relocate the capital from Chang'an to Luoyang. So she moved the capital away from Chang'an and built a new capital in the city of Luoyang. And Luoyang was the eastern capital, the capital of Eastern Han Dynasty, also the capital of the Eastern Zhou Dynasty. So there she built a series of buildings to um, to legalize her claim as the son of heaven. And one of those key buildings 
a son of heaven must build is Ming Tang, right? We discussed that in the um, in the Han Dynasty lecture. Because Ming Tang was a building where the son of heaven would perform uh, cyclic rituals following the cycle of the universe. Uh, each month, the son of heaven would perform a ritual in an appropriate location in the Ming Tang. And that operation, ritual operation, was a key Confucian ceremony to legit legitimatize a um, ruler as as you know having the mandate of heaven so Empress Wu also did that um, she had a discussion with her high officials about how to build Ming Tang what its form should be and um, uh, etc and etc so today you know we don't know exactly but based on historical record and based on the um, archaeological site which, which was not preserved as well as the the city as those town monument in Chang'an but offer some insight archaeologists were able to reconstruct the Empress Wu's Ming Tang it featured again square and a circle symbolizing the interaction of heaven and earth and the emperor as the uh, middleman for heaven and earth to rule the people in between um, the building um, from the description was perfectly perfectly geometric with a square uh, first floor and a two circular upper levels um, and the on the first floor elevated on a octagonal um, platform accessed from three staircases on each each cardinal side um, and on the first on the first floor four big rooms representing the four season and then two smaller additional halls attached to that but then um, on each side you have like three rooms represent the uh, three months of the season um, so it's slightly different from the Han Dynasty um, but in this case you know some rooms like this one would be simultaneously for the first month and the last month and this one simultaneously for the third month and the fourth month the last month of spring shared with the first month of the um, um, of summer uh, but still if you look at each side there are three rooms representing three months and the four sides represent four seasons and this is the reconstruction of that building so actually there is an interesting phenomena in Chinese history whoever left a Ming Tang that rulers um, status at the Son of Heaven were usually being in question being not so stable not a unquestionable um, not not with unquestionable claim to the throne it is usually that kind of ruler who uh, most enthusiastically construct Ming Tang and which is understandable of course if someone was unquestionably a son of heaven he might not actually that um, urgent in need for the construction Empress Wu built a Ming Tang um, also you know in the Han Dynasty um, a guy whose family name was different from the um, Han Emperor you know the family name for Han Dynasty Emperor was Liu but a guy whose name is Wang Mang who um, family name is Wang 
claimed to be an emperor during Han Dynasty, and he also built that famous kind of Han Dynasty Ming Tang. So um, both of these archaeologically confirmed Ming Tang construction in later Chinese history after the Zhou Dynasty were actually built by someone whose status as the Son of Heaven uh, were in question with a big question mark for their status, which just proved again how significant Ming Tang was, you know, for to in, in the um, um, in the Confucian society to to strengthen or to 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 conf, um, confirm someone being a um, legitimate um, ruler. And that's the Han Dynasty Ming Tang built by Wang Mang. Um, and this is the Tang Dynasty Ming Tang built by uh, Wu Zetian. Let's write you the... Uh, this is the uh, Tang imperial family name. But the, the guy who actually built it And um, her family name was Wu. And this is also a female. And the um, Han Dynasty Empress family name was Liu. But the guy who built this Ming Tang, his family name was Wang. So um, both Ming Tang were constructed by someone who claimed to be the son of heaven, but whose claim was actually, you know, not not quite legitimate. Um, Han Dynasty Ming Tang, Tang Dynasty Ming Tang, the major difference, you know, they share a lot of similarity. Both are concentric, feature circle and a square, and, uh, you know, rooms representing seasons and the month. Um, to be performed with ritual. The key difference, of course, is the Han Dynasty Ming Tang has an earth core. Tang Dynasty, it was a pure wooden structure. Whatever you see from outside, it represents the scale of the interior space. There was a big interior space, but that was not the case for the Han Dynasty Ming Tang. Right from outside, looks pretty big, but the interior was not that big, uh, and that's that's you know the point here. Um, Tang Dynasty constructing large scale, pure wooden structure became possible, and uh, gradually that Tai Xie typology disappear. In Chinese his in Chinese architecture, the Tai Xie or high platform architecture um, basically disappeared after the Tang Dynasty, um, and uh, from Tang Dynasty on, pure wooden construction just elevated on a platform instead of being combined with a platform became the mainstream. In, um, in traditional Chinese architecture. Um, Empress Wu built big. You know, she, she ruled China for a long time, directly ruling China for two decades and more. And uh, according to historical record, you know, her husband, Gao Zong, was very sick toward the later period of her reign and Empress Wu were actually doing the imperial, managing the imperial business while her husband was still alive. Basically in, in the six, um, 660s and 670s, she was already, you know, performing um, the job of an emperor and um, you know she built up her network and a lot of officials became 
loyal to her already, and uh, as soon as her husband died, you know she, you know basically literally uh, run the country in her own hand, um, with her son as pulpit emperor, and later she just dethroned her sons and became an emperor on her own. You know, take the empire in her own hands. She, um, you know, I I mentioned that she tried to make a difference from the previous Tang Dynasty. Um, she relocated the capital. She also tried to shift the imperial ideology from Taoism to Buddhism. Well, I mentioned early early Tang emperors were pretty much Taoists. Uh, at at least they claim so. Empress Wu was a enthusiastic sponsor of Buddhism in China, and she also published a sutra that hinted she was a reincarnation of a Buddha, and she sponsored this monumental cave at Longmen, which is very close to Luoyang. The new capital, um, you know, Empress Wu moved to the eastern capital. So this gigantic Buddha, you can tell its scale, forty-four feet high, uh, by comparing to human scale. And this is, um, according to, uh, you know, historical anecdotes. Um, Empress Wu donated her, um, her, you know, cosmetic, um, you know, the, the the money she used to spend to dress her up, um, to build this this one. You know, she obviously spent a lot of money to dress up. Um, so this is an enormous cave, um, and uh, it was said also that the face of this Buddha looks like Empress Wu. This, like the Northern Way Buddhist cave at Yungang, used to be the end part of a temple. There were wooden structure attached to it to form a covered space. So this is used to be a Buddha hall, and those holes in the wall used to be inserted with beams to be supported by columns in front. And there used to be a roof, it extending from that mountainside. And so you should imagine that originally you won't be able to see the statue like that. You have to enter from the wooden gate, and entering a wooden hall. And that size, the interior space, you know, the interior space to shelter a statue forty-four feet high, that is a big wooden hall. And that is obviously cannot with an earth core. So which again, even though the wooden building disappeared um, after more than a thousand year, it testified the high, you know, level technology of pure wooden construction. They were capable of building big architecture um, in the Tang Dynasty, and the, the sculpture were. Absolutely, you know, beautiful um, and very sophisticated. So we will stop here.